Today we're going to be using Portrait Professional 11, the Studio Edition Master Series, to exclusively edit a photo. Um, while it has issues with certain photos, I'm going to use it to edit a photo I know it will be okay with. Um, you go over here to the top to go File, Open, and I'm going to go on my computer to where I know this photo lives. Um, I'm going to need to know the file name because there's no preview for raw files and I'm going to be getting a raw file. If I was going to be um, opening this normally I would um, normally go through Lightroom which would help me find the raw NEF file since I shoot Nikon and then I would um, use that to um, locate my file. In this case I have some sidecar JPEGs that's going to help me a little bit. I know the file I'm looking for is number um, I'm going to cheat and go to Lightroom and see the file name. I'm going to get number 76 and really that helps this is the one I want right here. And it opens up directly in a portrait professional. And it takes a moment to open. I'm running Windows 7. And it knows it's a woman. Uh, this is a new install. I don't need to see these messages again. Control key to zoom in the cursor. Maybe I will see that again. It's got some new help items. I'm just going to adjust some of these control points right here. But I'm going to adjust several of them later. So this, these I could have adjusted now. But I'm going to adjust them later just to show you that I can. I clicked over here to the next, or I could have hit the space bar and it's going to open up and edit this photo okay this was not the photo I wanted these are not the droids you're looking for, it opened 75 okay this is not what we want but you can see that it has done a lovely job on this right out of the box. Um, there's a little bit, if you look, you can see the eye right there. I'm going to zoom in on it. It thinks there's an eye there, but I'm going to uh, close this eye. That's not closing the eye. This is the eye. I want to close the eye. And there's still an artifact right there. Let me move the entire eye over here and see if we can't get it to figure out that this eye is closed. And now that eye looks pretty darn good. You can see that it's really done a great job on the skin. I'm going to look at this other eye. You can see that it's got the eyeball right here. So I'm going to put these in the right place. And you can see that I can make this adjustment now. In, in Portrait Professional 9 and 10, you couldn't make these changes after the fact. And it would have been a nightmare to impossible to have gotten this to look the way we wanted. Having to go back and forth, it would have been quite impossible. I'm going to move the eyebrow around a little bit and you can see it sharpened that eyebrow. I'm going to move over to this eyebrow. Look at that. There's quite a bit of hair here. You can see that it's toned a lot of that down. Um, that looks 
a lot better. I could remove some of this hair in Photoshop, and I would normally, but I think this is going to be a significant improvement bringing the head down, which changes the face sculpting. I have the face sculpting turned on. Uh, when I'm working in Photoshop, typically I don't do that. I want to now look just at the face, so I click this face slider, and I want to uh, just get to the side of the face here. This is doing a very lovely job on this image. Get the lips right. Um, now sometimes, when you have an open mouth like this, um, it is sometimes very difficult to change the open mouth after the fact. I didn't... I'm going to zoom in on that area. And that can go to, I'm over here on the mouth. To get this mouth to open is almost impossible after the fact. It, I could have done it in the other screen, but now it is not letting me open the mouth. And what that means is it's not letting me whiten the teeth. This is one of the shortcomings of the program. I've uh, found this problem in other images, and typically. I will take care of this adjustment before I move forward. Um, but it looks good enough, so I'm not going to worry about it. But this does get in the way of me doing any kind of modifications to the teeth, where normally I'd be able to do that. There's a little bit of hair in here. I'm going to use the touch-up brush. The touch-up brush is much better. I'm going to make it a little smaller. And see if I can touch up that nose hair. Did a pretty good job of cleaning that nose hair. It's not perfect. I'm going to have the restore brush to just restore right there. I want to restore just the edge of the nose. And that looks pretty good. Um, there's some makeup flakes here, which I'll show you the, the touch-up brush. And you can see that it's that's not very nice. So I'm going to remove that and leave it as it originally was. I'm going to fit here and see the entire face. And that looks fairly pleasing. Um, moving the the hair edge over, the hair edge over here, and that image, I would say, is usable the way it is. Um, this little thing is in the original image. Then you go File, Save As. I'm going to save this as a my choices are TIFF or TIFF. So I'm going to save it as a TIFF in the folder that I normally save in. And we're done.